Today we're going to show you how to make this floating dock. For my existing dock, I use the composite plastic uh, decking material. Costs a lot more, but it is pretty permanent and it's held up really well for several years. Uh, I'm going with wood on this one, uh, not mainly because of the cost, because I do like how long that composite material lasts. But I want this dock, this floating dock, to be something that I can sit on in my shorts and can paddle around and fish off of. And the composite decking just gets too hot in the sun for that. So that's why I'm going with the wood so that it won't get as hot. And it'll be tolerable to sit on. Already got the hook set up there. We're going to put the dock right there on the side. So for that reason, I'm going to build it as close to the water here as I possibly can. Now here's the parts list I have. And I'm going to build it. It's going to be 10 foot by 10 foot square. I have, I'm going to use uh, tuba tins. So I have uh, 10 tuba tins. And I have uh, wood decking boards for the top. I have like 22 of those. I looked at getting uh, hardware attachments just to make the corner stronger. But it was uh, just cheaper for me. I had an old four by four posts I cut them nine inches length about nine inches length so I'll have one in each corner to attach the corners uh, so that the ends of the boards won't split out here I am pre-drilling the boards at the ends so just so the screws will not uh, split the boards at all this is where it's nice to have a few extra hands to hold these boards where you need them while someone else screws them in to hold them in place. The distance of this first floor joist might change based on the size of the barrels that you use for your dock. So pay attention to that. These are 21 and a half on the inside measurement, and then that'll have it uh, not touching the boards on top, so the, the top will be down where the grass is. And you actually want it to shove on the sides here, not on the boards down here. So I think that'll work, 21 and a half. This is another good project to get kids involved and to be able to teach them some carpentry skills, some construction skills. So I took full advantage of that. Uh, not sure that they all enjoyed it, but some of them did. Take this thing. Pay attention closely. Sibling love here. Now draw it down the thing. This is an artistic piece here? of work. This is not artistic. Yes, it is. Ooh. Art is interesting. This is not. Get back here. Bring that hammer back. I said bring a hammer when you come back. That hammer seems to be working fine. <laughs> when you don't have a hammer, use a tube before. All right, we got all the floor joist in. You'll see here on the end of the corner that I did put lag bolts in to those uh, four by four posts to make this stronger. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may wanna do that. There's a lot of forces on this. Here I'm adding some braces to try to keep the barrels from shoving these floor joists apart whenever the weight of the dock goes on them. Um, I did this really quick and be careful to do this correctly. You actually might even want to have a brace that goes all the way uh, from one end to the other because you would be amazed at how much force this is. And it, I did get these shove, the barrels did shove them apart a little bit. Thought we would just easily pick this up, put the barrels under it. This thing was so heavy, so you would need a lot of extra people, especially if you use tuba tins. 
You might be able to get by with uh, two baits or something, but I want to make sure it was up out of the water enough uh, since I have a family of uh, six people, grandkids probably coming at some time on this uh, floating dock. So we just put all the barrels under. It was quite a bit of an effort, at least all five of us. Had a cameraman in the back kind of taking it easy, but we uh, got them all in there eventually. And then we're going to see us try to slide this down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Daddy, the barrel's stuck. Yep, barrel's stuck. Back up, back up. Back up. That's a hard part. Oh, okay. Now I'll it. There we go. Yep. My barrel's stuck. Okay. We had cattails there and we cut them and, and that's what we uh, end up hitting with the barrels. So if you don't have cattails or something to hit, this sliding in method will work very nicely. Uh, we did run into some problems there, but we had enough brute force and ingenuity there to eventually get it in. So that's a success for us. One more shove? Yeah. Can you step on it? There you go. There you go. There we go, right like that. There we go. Okay. That easy. <laughs> Hold on to this, don't let it take off. Now we're just bringing out the decking boards. Uh, you'll see me uh, look at both sides, try to pick the best side for the top. In hindsight, I told you about those uh, floor joists spreading out when we put the barrels on. If I had this to do over, I would have mounted a few of these decking boards, even if it was just temporarily until I got the other ones permanently mounted to keep these floor joists from spreading apart. I think that would be something I would advise you to do. Come on, act like you're having fun. These pressure treated boards were all warped and crooked. So we had to use some clamps to uh, straighten them out and kind of force them until we could screw them down. So that's kind of what you'll see here with the clamps. Please comment about this video if there's something that you would have done differently or if you have any questions that maybe I didn't explain well enough in this video. I'd be happy to answer them anytime. You can see the barrel there in the back pushing up. So the, what's happened is those floor joists have spread apart. That's why I say uh, do this a little more careful than I did. Make sure you support those uh, floor joists so they won't spread apart on you. Here I'm using a bracing bit because I don't have any electric up here now to drill some holes for some eye bolts that we'll use to uh, hold the dock in place. Uh, you can see uh, you want to leave at least a couple of the top boards off so that you can uh, access this area if you want to install hardware like this. I had to add a block here just to make the threads on the eye bolt uh, start biting. You can see there's just a spacer block. So put that on there and then we'll put a nut, a washer on. are putting the last board on. Uh, you can see the lag bolt down there that I mentioned. I think I would recommend uh, doing something like that or using some hardware. There's just so much force that these barrels and the weight of the wood plus the weight of all the people getting on it. And here's the finished dock. I think it turned out pretty well. Now we're just going to add some paint. 
And we have had really good luck with the magic uh, paints and stains from Rural King or Tractor Supply. So that's what we used. It's a little more affordable. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.